Welcome back to another episode of the Human Advisor Podcast. I am your host, Tyrone Ross. As always, you know the drill. I got to give it to you. Go to YouTube, smash that subscribe button. Go to all of your places where you listen to podcasts. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Hit us up at humanadvisorpodcast.com. What you're about to see is my conversation with Ryan Hughes of Bull Oak Capital. I will tell you this, for all of the practice management geeks out there, you are in for a treat. What you'll see initially is on the walk and talk, we talk about the name of his firm, right, how he came about that name. A lot of us like to name um, our firms after ourselves to kind of make ourselves feel important, but he has a really unique story behind the name of his firm, and he gives us a little bit about why he chose the location, which I thought was really unique. And the sit down, the takeaway that I've learned in, in not only from all of these conversations, but his specifically is these, right? Hands on, truly building a firm. And what you'll learn throughout the conversation is how he literally built his firm. I won't go into how, but literally built his firm with these two things, right? And, and he gets into the history of that, of what that means to him. One key takeaway is this that I, that I definitely want to get across for all financial advisors out there is the key to planning is to make sure that the clients buy in. And that was the biggest takeaway here. His planning process is extremely robust. And I think no matter who you are, what you do, who you serve, and how you charge for that service, if you do really robust planning, you won't have any problem attracting and retaining clients. So with that said, I won't keep you here any longer. Enjoy the highlights from this conversation. We'll talk to you soon. I appreciate you. Where my office is, when my clients pull into the parking lot and they walk through the lobby and go up to my floor, like those are all signals. Like whenever they come and meet with me, they know who I am, where I work, what schools I went to, how long I've been in the business. I don't have to mention it. I don't bring it up. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Right, the uh, the name of the firm, right? It's um, you know not the traditional you know free jewelry financial, or <laughs> my name, my Please name financial. Man. Yeah, yeah. So t- so talk a little bit about that and and how you came up with it and, and a little bit of the background, you know, of, of why it means so much to you and why you felt to, to name the firm that. Yes. Yeah, so um, I was starting this firm right in graduate school. So as I was graduating. I knew I wanted to start a firm, didn't know what to call it, so I sent out a survey just to a bunch of friends. Oh, really? And okay. so I had a bunch of terrible names like Ryan Hughes Investments, yeah. and Hughes Capital Management, right. and you know nobody liked any of them. Then a buddy emailed me and he said, hey, what about Bull Oak? Bull and I Oak. said, what is a Bull Oak? So he sent me the Wikipedia link and apparently the Bull Oak tree is the strongest wood in the world, oh. only found in Australia. Okay, okay. Yeah. And there so you I said, go. you know, I could build a brand around that. You got the bull with the bull market, big and strong and aggressive. And right. Oak tree, time right. tested and everything else. Okay. So. A lot of depth there. That's good. That's, that's, yeah. that's, deep, so. that's deeper than most. It's, it's funny. A lot of people are, uh, were asking me the same thing about 401. They're like, what is that? What is that? And it's like, I, I'll story. tell you. Yeah, there's always a story. Yeah. So the power of a story, um, again, is, and I always talk about in all of these interviews, is that the name of the firm, your background, which we'll get into, all of that goes into your practice. It's yeah. what makes you you. It's ultimately what goes into your practice as well. So you mentioned, you know, when we got here, that you had been trying to get in this area and around here for a while. You can't choose a bad spot in San Diego. Let's just tell the truth. <laughs> but why? Well, why here? Like in this this particular area? Was it proximity to clients or clients? Clients. Yeah, yeah that, that was the biggest thing. I mean, I was in downtown. Great location. Great dining options. But you know, San Diego people a little bit spoiled they right. don't like driving they a don't like the, they don't like the traffic right right, right. so yeah. you, know, you got to keep your clients happy and I'm, right. I'm building a business here and you know in all honesty it is a little bit closer to my home so right, right. I wanted the perfect building with the perfect setting right off the freeway and right you know great locations so. right and, and, and let's talk about that for a little bit because I know there's I I don't know how but I speak to a lot of people that has never been here so okay. right, they've never yeah. been to San Diego if you yeah. haven't get here. Um, but so it, is it lack of public transportation? I know it's the spoil part, but you know, it's just, it's just not California easy to get traffic yeah. is just rough. Okay. Yeah. 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 I All mean, right. I lived in LA for 10 years. I mean, LA right. is the, the worst. Right. It's right. bad. Right. So San Diego, it's bad, but not, not, not okay. nearly as bad. Right. 
And, and, and is that, is it consistent across all the clients or is there younger clients that are just like, we can Zoom, right? <laughs> we, can, we can use technology or what, like, is, is you it know, just? I, I have it all available. Right. It's okay. cheap, it's like 10 bucks a month, right. but I really don't use it. You right. know, it's just that, that human aspect. You know, right. Clients want to see you face to face. I mean, right. they're entrusting you with their financial wealth. Right. They right. want to be there, present with right. it. So that's amazing, and that's yeah. amazing. I want to I want to touch on that that more later on. But so so talk about that. The actual, you know, the the clients that you work with. Yeah. Um, again, not super in depth, but just to you know, if, if you had to, because again, I've I talk about this a lot. My mentor always says your book of business, right? Well, and your clients and the people that you serve will start to to resemble you a bit, right? Kind of right. align in the same way. So if you had to say what the typical client or the average client looks like below client, what is that? Like, it's pretty young compared to most books of businesses, mm -hmm. and and I have a you know pretty high minimum, seven fifty. I mean, not okay. that many people have that kind of money. Right. So you would think that they'd be well into their retirement years, but I say the average age is about fifty years old. Right. They're in their working prime of their life, and they just need somebody that they truly trust. And, right. and given that it's San Diego, a lot of them work for tech or biotech. So Qualcomm is out here. Right. A lot of biotech startups are out here. So a lot of stock option type clients. Right. Right. And they're just they just need somebody who's competent and honest to talk to. Right. So we got to address the elephant in the room now. I'm sure you okay. said minimum is 750. Everybody was yeah. like, oh, gasp, right? Yes, but I'm sure, yes. again, you're, I, I know you and you're very methodical and you have a purpose for that. So talk about why you have that, right? And, and because I think, I don't think there's anything wrong if people have minimums, right? We all sure. have, there's all segments of the market that we could you're all gonna serve. You're going to have some type, yeah, something. Right, you absolutely. You've got to have a gate somewhere. Yep, at, yeah. at some point. So talk yeah. talk about how you, not necessarily how you came to that number, but but again, being where you are yeah. in, in in building a practice, what, what what did you see where it was, it was the, you know, like this will probably be the perfect fit for me, or how you settled on um, that number, so to speak. To be clear, when I first started the firm, I had no book of business, so okay. a little bit non-traditional. Really? Yeah, so okay. I, I started this firm right out of graduate school okay didn't have a book of business didn't have a network here in San Diego Wow and so um, my minimum was if you could fog a mirror right. you could become my client <laughs> pretty much right Build, yes. building an advisory yes. firm 101 yeah. if you can, can you breathe <laughs> thanks so slowly that number started to increase and increase because I'm, I'm cognizant that I have capacity at some point right right and I I'm building a lifestyle practice where I don't want a thousand clients. I right. don't want to be running around. My life isn't going to be stuck here in my office all the time. So right. you have to have a gate of some kind. And 750 is honestly, it was just a natural progression. Really? You know, from zero to 100 to 250 to 500 to 750. And right. maybe it'll go up to a million. I was just about to ask, do you, do you envision that change? Yeah, I'm not change there yet, or, right. but yeah, it could happen. Yeah, right. I can definitely right. see it happening. Okay. And, and again, we, we spoke about this, so you, you're roughly serving how, many, servicing how many clients right now? I have about 75 households. Okay. Yeah. All right. And it's and about 58 million. Okay. Right and right solo, now. right? Just, just you for the solo, most part. Solo, right? yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. And, and, it's, and again, we spoke about this as well, the capacity is you seem like you can, you have high touch points, you yes. know, with your clients and yeah. that, that face to face. But you got to be efficient important. about it though too. Yeah, yeah. You got yeah, we'll to drive efficiency into the firm. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll get into that. And yeah. and one of the things that, and again, maybe just as me being spoiled with tech and, and where I am is that my clients, I, I never see them. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it's like, it's yeah. a Zoom, it's a FaceTime, it's whatever. So it's interesting that you said that. Like now again, I, 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 don't, I don't think it'll ever go away to be able to sit across with somebody right. or be in the same room with somebody. And what I've noticed is they want to meet when it's very personal. Oh yeah. Or when it's yeah. something with There's something a really right, right, exactly. Something is really happening. Like, in the room. Okay, I need to see you now. Right. And yeah. and I and, and coming through the wirehouse, it was always like every meeting had to be this two hour white styrofoam cup meeting with pie charts. And it's like you can tell styrofoam, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like the, the client yeah. is like, when is this gonna end? But yeah. I think for for just you know, that, that constant touch and just checking in or whatever that that can be, at least for me, right? But it, it's, and this is the beauty of it, is yeah. of this business is that, yeah, there's some some advisors that are 
I don't have a minimum. I'm going to work with people. There's some sure. advisors that say, I want to see my clients to come and see me. Yeah. I, I have a, I have an office for a reason. And there's some like myself that are like, listen, I'm going to we're going to use every piece of tech possible so that you can be on the fly. All I'm right. traveling. I'm doing things so we can connect here. Um, and I think that that essentially is what makes this business interesting is why it's so good to hear from people who aren't doing what you do because i know i couldn't do what you do right and 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 do it that well so let, let, let's you know let's talk about this just, just the transition so and and we'll we'll dig dig more into that but the efficiency part right and there there's so many again solo practitioners that'll be watching this right if you have a team again you still have to be efficient I don't know, no matter where you are you have to be efficient yeah but for for i guess for for those that are coming up in a time now where tech is just dismantling our business left and right yeah. um, and and you have a, a very um, nuanced way that you use technology talk a little bit about just the efficiency part of how it allows you as a sole practitioner yeah. right the ability to say okay well tech is going I'm going to utilize tech to be able to allow myself one to service my clients well but more importantly allow me to have a life outside of here talk right. talk a little bit about that importance to you and, and maybe someone could pick up something from what you're actually doing so tech is all about leverage like that's what it is it's leverage where you could free up your time just like people is also a form of leverage because tech is a lot more cheaper and more efficient right? right right so i use it from anything from client communications to keeping track i mean i use it even on a new prospect so right. I'm, I'm i'm very big on seo online presence here in local san diego okay and so the minute somebody reaches out and signs up for my newsletter or schedules a phone call with me, they're automatically on this email system where it's specialized emails that get sent out immediately, one day later, three days later, a week later, so on and so forth. Wow. And it's just all content that's relevant to them. Awesome. Like content about social security, content about stock options, content right. about what to look for in hiring a financial advisor. Right, right. And so it just frees them. I don't have to physically type out those emails every single time. Got it, got it. And so it's, you, you've got to utilize it. Right. I mean, tech is just, I, and that's probably why I'm getting a lot of younger clients as well. Yep, yep. You know, it's, it's just you, in a business where financial planning and especially money management is becoming very commoditized, right. the only way that you can separate yourself is by being true to yourself. Yep. Let your personality shine and yep. You will attract like-minded individuals. Yep. And and there's there's uh, there's this chasm now that is growing between the advisory community, those that are like myself that have an online presence that are constantly online, and then people yeah. are like, well, if they're always doing that, how could they grow their business like that? Yeah. Right. That's yeah. just how I grow. It may not be that. And again, in having this conversation there's with, you know, one way to grow. It's not yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not. It's yeah. not. And, and, you know, shout out to Jason Wank. We were talking about this as well. He was saying that he was, I think, on a recent podcast he did. He was saying you also don't need to be popular either to grow your business right you, and he's exemplary of that right yeah, yeah, um yeah. two mega firms he's, that he's in grown, the shadows, right yeah. always yeah. in the shadows and you ask yeah. people if you know them and they're like who and you're like well you need to know <laughs> if, yeah if you knew <laughs> right so yeah. you know it, I, I think it's it's this it's a shame that it's happening again i'm i'm on and i know you you dabble in twitter a little bit but you know those of us that are using show, social media to grow and create that presence right and and yeah. as, as i was saying you know, in, in another another one of these is it's a filter, right? Because people yeah. can look at whether it's a again, it could be a newsletter, it could it could be a it could be a podcast interview, yeah. or it could just be your online presence and say, nah, that's not yeah. for he's not for me or she's not for me, um, or this is somebody I really well, it's, want it's to confirmation, want to know. you yeah. know. So I, I write a blog. Like right. my big thing is blogs. I started a podcast. I'm not very good at it, right. but I'll get better at it. <laughs> yeah, you know? of course, of course. But if somebody is interviewing me and three other advisors here in town, they can go to my podcast and they can listen to episodes. They yep. can go to my blog post and read it and they can, it's just another data point. Right. And saying, okay, well, you know what? I really like what he's saying here. I resonate with what he's saying there. And right. it's just, it's just putting the odds in my favor. Right. That's it. And the other thing that I love about that too, whether it's a podcast or whether, you know, it's me flipping on Periscope with the walk and talks or whatever. Now as an advisor, Fed cuts rates. You can give your clients yeah. data on that. I'm not so good at that. that. Right in the moment. Yeah. Give me a week to filter <laughs> yeah, it all. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. But, you, but yeah. you can. You have it. Yeah. I mean, but think yeah. about it. 
Yeah. You can, if, even if it's a week, right? Go back 10, 15 years ago, it was, you know, write it up, go through compliance, every this, that, whatever, every quarter. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, <laughs> wait, what? I don't even remember that they cut rates. But right. now advisors right. have the ability to kind of package that information and get it out however they want. Podcasts, and talk tweets, about whatever the case may be. I mean, yeah. Technology, you just type it out once and it goes out to everybody. Even though I'm not sending a personalized letter to my one specific client every week, yeah. they're still hearing from me. They, yeah. They're still getting my thoughts. Right. No, I, and, yeah. and I, you know, when we sit down, I, I look forward to uh, digging a little bit more into that and talk about how you actually, you know, built your practice around the tech stack. So that would be really cool. All right, so I am back here with Brian Hughes of Bull Oak Capital. Uh, we switched it up a bit. We have a little bit of feng shui outside San Diego vibe going on. Um, what an incredible view you got here, man. This is a. Uh, this is, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't suck, as I always say. It's like you can, at any point in San Diego, you could just turn and point, and it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful view. Um, again, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for having me, man. It's, it's, it's cool, it's cool to be here. Out. Yeah, it. yeah, this is, this is awesome. Um, <clears throat> lots to cover again. We just kind of went over some surface stuff in the, in the, in the walk and talk, but we, yeah. we don't want to dig a little bit deeper here. So let's just get a, you know, right off the bat, right? Uh, uh, let's get a little bit more into the firm. Right. Okay. Um, and, and so talk a little bit about the firm and then what I really want people to, to get a feel for is you. Right. And, and what makes you you? Because you, we bring our we bring our life experiences and, and, and our backgrounds to our practice. So let's just get a feel about, you know, below capital and, and you um, sure. and, and start wherever you know, strikes you, strikes you best. All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I started this firm right out of graduate school. So right. I worked at Merrill and Morgan and Schwab. Wirehouse baby. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. Did that until I call it my quarter life crisis. Right. You know, I, <laughs> right. I, I, I hit a, a wall and I hated being the sales guy and constantly having to hit pitch product and right. uh, went back to school. Okay. So I went to UCLA for business school. Okay. And knew I wanted to do my own thing. And uh, so, so that's what I did. So right. um, I started the firm, moved from LA down here, okay. no book of business, no network in San Diego. Right. I have a wife and two young kids. Okay. And so this is where I wanted to raise my, my kids and my family. Okay. Yeah. So you, you moving here to start the firm, was it? You start the firm. Just, well, okay. It was to start the firm or it was, was it family first oh. and then the firm? Okay. Yeah. I right. knew, yeah, my wife and I knew that we wanted to come back down here to San Diego. Okay. I was stationed out here in the Navy. Okay. And my okay. wife went to school out here. Okay. And so we, our heart is here. Our heart wasn't right. in LA. Right. Uh, we just had to find a way to get back. And I, I knew if I started my firm in LA, there was going to be no way that I would move down here. So right. it was either now or never. Okay. So 2014, came okay. out here, launched the firm. Right. And I was a bit naive in terms of how quickly the firm would grow. It did not grow fast at all. Right. <laughs> First year or two was was rough. Right. I mean, it was stress was high. It right. was it was not easy. Um, quickly had to shift gears in terms of making myself and my firm more competitive. Um, things got really real whenever my wife lost lost her job. So wow. So she worked for the Screen Actors Guild in okay. L.A. and they right. allowed her to work remotely down here. So they okay. gave her company laptop. And three months in, she got a new boss. New boss said, no, everybody needs to come into the firm. So she lost her job. And so wow. here's my startup, no revenue. I'm, I'm losing money. Right. And my wife lost her job and we got two kids at home. I mean, wow. it, talk, talk about motivation. Man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and again, not to interrupt you really quickly. So one of the things that I always talk about is, is how similar starting a financial services firm is to being a startup. Right. And yeah. it's like it, it's you got you know, a bootstrap. Our, it, right. Got a bootstrap. Our clients are like our LPs. Right. It's like it's 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 a, it's it's amazing how how that works. And also for, for those of you out there that are wanting to start any type of endeavor, the beginning is going to be tough. The, the It's great to have the inspiration and to do it. And yeah. you finally you get the LLC and you get registered and all that. But when you actually got to put foot to pavement, it's yeah. tough. And then life happens. Right. Yeah. Um, but back into that. So, you know, the 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 situation with your wife and then you know obviously you had to dig in right yeah I had to dig in and um you know one key thing that that I was, that, that really stuck with me was and, and i mentioned it earlier is yeah. in there's 686,000 financial advisors in the u.s right and so there's a lot of us i mean the right. barrier to entry to get in is pretty low so right. how do you separate yourself 
And for me, the, the finance education at UCLA was part of it, but the other part was you gotta be unique. Yeah. You gotta be you and you gotta be true to your nature and yourself and just go out there and just tell your story to anybody that will listen. Right, so what, yeah. what, what was the first thing that you did where you thought, where you looking back now yeah. made a tangible difference when, okay, now I hit that inflection point, right? So my, my mentor always says, right, you, you, there's, a, there's a point where you, you come like this and it's like you make that decision and yeah. either it's gonna go up and to the right, right, or, or it goes the other way. So what, what was the thing that you did or things that you did where you was like, okay, now we're starting to see some traction and so, grow? So a stronger online presence. Okay. Like that, that was the big thing. And I, I, this is a skill that I never thought I would have, but it's building your own website, believe it or not. Oh, wow, you did and that, wow. It, I did five versions of them. So wow. It, I never thought I would be able to do that, but a lot of YouTube videos and <laughs> wow. trying to figure it out yourself. Um, that's just, too, that's just too many that of us like could it. say I built your own website, wow. Yeah, and so building my own website and just the SEO aspect of it, like okay. the blog writing and yeah. having the keywords and having it clean and backlinks and all that stuff. I mean, right. it's, in, in 2019, it's, it's critical. Right. You know, especially if you want to grow. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. many different ways to grow, but I wanted to grow using the scalability of the internet. Right. And, and um, right. <laughs> shout, shout out to everybody like myself who grew up with growing your business, cold calling. <laughs> that, yeah, that's cold that, calling. That, that, that was, yeah, that, that, that was my thing. But I, again, I think being able to utilize social media well a lot of those same skills go into it now i can't build no website i'm never doing that that's it that's a that's awesome that you did that um yeah. and and we'll, we'll we'll get into the seo stuff and, and like you said being very um you know direct in that and having intent and keeping it clean and, and doing all that because i think yeah. th that's a big takeaway that advisors will be able to to turn this off right because i'm i'm big on the what i call a the Tony Robbins effect is like I walk on hot coals in front of 50,000 people and then I get home, it's Monday morning and like, I'm still broke, Tony, what do I do now, right? So we want to give people some, <laughs> want to give people some free jewelry when they turn this off and like, okay, I can go look at Google Analytics or look at some keywords yeah. and stuff. So I definitely, I definitely want to get there, but staying in that vein, right, of, of you, right, and, 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 may, and, and, and building the practice, right, and, and you started to get into a little bit about right no matter who you are what you do in life life right it, just, it doesn't stop swinging right you can be very skilled at ducking and all that but you will get hit in the front and back of the head so so talk a little bit more about you know your how how and you mentioned you know in, in, in graduate school or whatever but you, and you mentioned the navy so how did all of that come together to make you you, you how you grew up where yeah. you grew up right colorado that whole thing so talk a little bit about that and and what got us to sitting here today and, and build you your got own. a few hours yeah all right <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> so um you know it, it's a unique story yeah you know, and everybody's story is yep um mine is uh, I'm, I'm from pueblo colorado it's a, it's a smaller town about a hundred thousand people my father is a persian immigrant so wow. he came out here whenever he was 17 years old and it's the you know the real american story type of thing mm -hmm. and um he uh he, he married my wife, who you know, is a relatively you know, three quarters white, I believe is what she is. Right. And um, they, they had me and my sister and they divorced. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, my, my mother, well, to put, it, to put it lightly, my mother and my father were, they both were not in a position to raise my sister and I. And so my, my grandparents, this is my mom's parents, mm -hmm. they, they took us in and eventually they adopted us and, and sort of became our parents. Wow. And so, um, yeah, they, they, were, they, were the, they were the angels, right? They were, right? they were our saviors. And wow. they gave us that stable household of somebody always being there and showing us love and, and trying to raise us the best that they could. And, you know, right. they, they, they were older and, you know, they, they weren't very well off. And we, we lived in a trailer park, but it was a nicer trailer in the trailer park, you know, right. so it was, it was good. It was stable. Right. right. And, um, you know, they, they did the best that they could and, and, you know, God bless them for it, but they, they were world war II and great depression style of people where you need to toil with your hands. You need to make a living doing something that requires like physical manual labor. Mm -hmm. Right. So their path for me was to become a welder. 
and they said, we're not going to send you to school. You know, school, I'm not going to, this is my, my, you'll love my grandfather. He's, right. he's a character man. Right. He, he told me, he says, there is no way that I am ever going to pay for four years for you to party. Like, <laughs> There's no way. Mm. So you can go to a trade school and become a welder, and that's the only way I will pay for your, your college. Wow. So um, I graduated high school with a 2.8 GPA. Right. You know, there was no focus on trying to do that well in school. And the first person that knocked on my door as an exit to get out of Pueblo, Colorado was, was the Navy. Wow. Okay. So I enlisted in the Navy uh, in 2000, so right before 9-11. Okay. And um, did that for four years. So I did two tours. My first deployment was as a sonar tech, which is the most boring job if you're in the Persian Gulf. Right. There's no submarine threat. Right. But um, my second deployment it was, a, was VBSS, which is Visit, Board, Search, and Seizure. So mm -hmm. That was a bit more exciting. So we boarded ships in the Persian Gulf looking for weapons, drugs, contraband. They would, we'd catch people that would smuggle people from port to port. Wow. And so I, I wore my, my VBSS shirt before right, you were right. here. There you go. There you go. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, thank you for your service, for one. Like that, that's, um, that needs to be addressed. But in, in all of that, going back through, through, through what, was, what is your first memory of money? My grandfather spending every dollar he had when he had it. But to give him credit, he never did take on debt. That was the generation where you did not take, take on, on debt, any right, debt at right, all. Right. And um, I thought it was normal to get your paycheck and just go blow it on whatever you want and whenever you wanted it. Right. And it wasn't until I met my wife, you know, she came from a very conservative type household where she says, no. Yeah, I mean, you need to save that money. Right, right, right. right <laughs> so right. that was my first big mental really? shift in okay. how to be okay. more fiscally responsible. Right, right. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. And, and then you end up being a financial advisor. Yeah. That, yeah. That's amazing. That, that, thanks for sharing that. And, and sure. again, I think it's, it's really important for people to understand a backstory because a backstory is what you what we talk about telling your story right. separating myself from the 600 other thousand advisors that are out there yeah. um and you gives know you different perspective on yep. life you know yep it's, yep absolutely and, and you know uh, uh, imagine being in a situation where you know again I've, I'm, i always say i'm blessed because my parents have been in my life they have a great relationship with my parents now when i when i hear that most people don't i'm yeah. like wow and it's it's common that people don't get along with one parent or some folks who don't even know their parents, right? Yeah. Um, the parents gave them up or whatever the case may be. So it's a really powerful thing um, to, to address that and then what it means that you bring um, to your practice and, and getting into that. Do you feel like, whether it's the experience, you know, from, from growing up, your grandfather or the Navy that you brought into how you actually work with clients now and, and you know, how yeah. you structure, structure your practice again to be efficient and things that you were talking about? Yeah, I, I think a lot of the, the big important lessons were, were from my grandfather. Right. I mean, my grandfather, his motto was whatever you choose to do in your life, be the best. Be the best, yeah. That's it. Right. You know, he says, he would always tell me, I have more respect for the man who's the custodian cleaning up your office, if he does a well job and he has yep. a lot of drive and yep. purpose behind it, yep. a lot more respect for him than say the attorney or the doctor who Float. just does a half-assed job. Yeah, yeah, you be know? great on your level. Yeah. What my mother says, be great on your level. Whatever you do, exactly. be great on your level. And right. so he said, take pride in whatever it is that you choose to do and, and, and do your best. Right. And right. so I've, I've always carried that with me and it served me well in the Navy, served me well through figuring out college and then doing well in college. And right. then now eventually into my practice and even at home, you know, relationship with my wife and, and right. my two young kids, it's right. well, life's too short to do otherwise. Right. And, and let's talk about that briefly of, of the importance of family to you, right? We, yeah. when, we, when we got to your office, you were just talking about the, the, how, how it's important for you to kind of take a break, take some time off and spend time with family. Yeah. Talk, talk about that. Do you kind of leave? Because a lot of advisors now I'm noticing are, you know, their, their clients are asking about their family. There's like extended family. They do client appreciation stuff. Like, but right. just in terms of your, your immediate family, how, how important is that to you and, and how you actually 
look at your, your business, how much time you should be spending to grow it, and also the importance yeah. of being in your kids' lives. And the one thing I always talk about is our business affords us great flexibility to be able to do that. You, you have the freedom to choose how you want to do yeah. it, yeah. which is great. Yeah. Um, I've, I've recently hit this inflection point, and um, I've talked to a few different people about it, but um, you know, my, my business is growing pretty fast, and, and right. I can go in one or two directions. I can go with the big scale up, you try to hire the best young graduates and coach them up and just try to just grow to grow. Build that AUM, build that revenue, right. and just build a, a bigger firm that has more of a presence than just San Diego, but eventually Southern California, California, West Coast, so on and so forth. Right. Um, or the other, co other path would be to build a really lean, efficient lifestyle practice and keep on those clients that I really have that deep relationship with and that I really enjoy working, but it gives me plenty of time to enjoy my family. Right. right? Go out and spend time with my wife and my two young kids. I have an 11 and eight year old at home. Right. And, um, you know, why not be that father who's present, who's always there and is able to take him to that football game and go out there and travel and you yeah. know, give them the best experience in childhood that they can. And so yeah. at the end of the day, it's obviously, I mean, it's, it's pretty common sense. Like that's what's important. Right. But I think, especially a lot of people here in the U.S., I mean, the, people lose sight of that. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all about status. You yeah. know, where am I in this ranking order of, of my peers? And, mm -hmm. you know, what is your AUM versus my AUM? Yeah, like, yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's about those that true relationship that you have with your family and your friends. And yeah. so I've decided to go down path B and drive efficiency and work with the clients that I want to work with and, and spend more time with my kids. You know, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm in the office every day at 9 a.m. and I get home every night at 6 p.m. for dinner and I don't work weekends. Right. That's, Can't beat that. that. That's a good life. Can't beat that. Wow, yeah. it's amazing you go into the office at all being in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but before, before we uh -huh. get into, because I, I think there's, there's so much that, you know, advisors watching this are going to get of how, you, of how you actually run your practice. But before we get there, because yeah. I think that that's going to be such a powerful um, and, and impactful conversation, staying true to that startup realm, right? And, and there's, there's, right, you, you have an iteration of a product and you release it and you think clients, you're going to give them what they want and they're going to use it yeah. this way and then they use it a whole totally different way and then the feedback you get, we're like, we really like all those features, we like this one yeah. and then you, you, you grow in that area. So I think as advisors, we think we believe why clients work with us, right? right. But let, let, just, I, I want to ask you about that though. Why do you think clients work with you as opposed to all of the other advisors that are in this area, right? There's some that yeah. we both know, right? Advisor really here. So yeah. why, do you, why do you think that someone's like, I, I want to be a, a below client? Like, why, why do you think they make that decision? You may not be right. They may, they, your yeah. clients may look at you like, no, that's not why. But why do you, what do you think you've either executed on or being in the marketplaces you've done well where people are comfortable reaching out to you and saying, will you please help me, right, with, with, my, with my personal life and, and, and my life situation? Because I am me and nobody else can replicate me. I, I, I think that that's it. And my experiences and my perspective, my education. Right. And honestly, I, I think a big part of it is just my storytelling. Whenever right. people come into the office. Right. Say, I've positioned this firm to serve you right. the best that you can. I made myself available to serve you the best that I can. Right. My knowledge of the financial markets, which... I believe a lot of financial advisors lack. Facts, I mean, you know. let's just keep it a buck. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just be and, honest. And that's, let's those are it. all differentiators. But, but let's stay yeah. there though, yeah. really quickly, because yeah. you mentioned we, we are in a time now where I always say this, like privilege is under attack. It's okay to acknowledge your privilege. It's, it's not yeah. cool to, to you know, talk about your credentials or whatever. And I always say, I, I say it, and I don't have any problem saying it. I think when people go look for a financial advisor right away, you should, go, you should look for a CFP first, right? Or someone that, that is competent in the markets first. Yeah. That's just where you should go first. And then not all CFPs are great. Right, and on the bottom side, right, not all brokers are terrible, but right. you, and you mentioned, right, my education, and you, and you put a lot into that, and yeah. you went and did that, and, and I love the fact that you That's leaned. hard to replicate. Right, bingo, and, and, yeah. and I love the fact that you leaned on that, because a lot of, it's, 
it, we can get too, oh, I want to be relatable. I want to be a friend. Well, yeah, I got a lot of friends who don't know nothing about the market. I got enough of those, <laughs> right? I need, I need yeah. you to explain this rollover yeah. to me, yes. right? So, so talk a little bit about that. Do, do, do you lead with that? Do you, do you really want to make a- I don't lead with it, but I know that whenever my clients or prospects come into the office, right. they've done their homework. Okay. okay. You know, my website is built with purpose. Okay. So when they go to my website, they're going to learn about me. They're right. going to learn about the investment philosophy that I run. Right. They're going to learn about the financial planning process. Okay. Even location, like these are all signals, right? Mm. Like where my office is, when my clients pull into the parking lot and they walk through the lobby and go up to my floor, like those are all signals, you know? And so they know, like whenever they come and meet with me, they know who I am, where I worked, what schools I went to, how long I've been in the business, I don't have to mention it. I don't right. bring it up. Right. Because I know that they've seen it. And if they didn't notice it on my website, I have a nice intro binder. I give them on their way out really? and they could see it there. Wow. Yeah. So do not adjust your screens. What you're seeing is free jewelry falling from the sky. <laughs> do not adjust your screens. Um, so so I, I, I don't I don't brag. Cause, right. No, no, it's yeah. not it's not you, but that's the thing, it's not yeah. bragging. It's just it's yeah. a differentiator. Just, I don't right. have that, right? right. I can't right. I can't I can't speak to those things and most advisors don't, but right. perfect segue into that. So talk right. about your process, your onboarding process. So let's talk about this. Let's start here where you go from the, the how you utilize technology to actually prospect, right? To sure. when someone comes in the door, what they walk yeah. away with, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm very big and I think most good advisors are about every single touch point with the client, especially onboarding yeah. and then ongoing. So, so talk a little bit about your process, the, the, the tech tools that you sure. use. And I thought, I thought that was really interesting that you said that, that you give the client something to walk away with yes. and, and the signals, that, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So. Initially with the prospect, right, it's everything is driven to my website. Okay. Somehow, whether it's a referral, whether it, they Google it, whether they, I don't know how, they go Google map and they say which financial advisors are near me, I want to be one of the top three people or at least firms that they see. Okay. And so whenever they see Bull Oak Capital, they go to my website, I have one single call to action on every single page that I have on my blog wow. post, on the podcast, on everything. Give which me an example is, of that. So if I go to a page, what would be a call to action? Like what put in a... No, the single call to action oh, is to in... get started. Really? Get started, get started. Are you ready to schedule a phone call or meet with Ryan? Oh, wow. Get started. Wow. You go to the get started page and I break it down into five steps. Okay. And a big orange button that says schedule a meeting. Wow. So whenever, ABC, always be closing. Always be closing. And <laughs> right. so that's all I'm asking for is right. either a phone call or a meeting. Okay. So if they schedule the phone call, yep. the next step after the phone, this is all high level stuff. Here's what my minimum is. Yep. I'm a fiduciary advisor. Right. You know, here's the investment philosophy. Right. And then, okay, next step is a meeting. Right. Get into my office. So uh, now on the back end, are you tracking all these analytics so you can see oh, yeah. uh, what page they went to, how long they stayed on the page? Oh, like yeah. you, you track all that, right? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Right. Not as much as I should be. Okay. I'm, I'm a one-man operation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I do. And I have right. all the right tools, all right? So okay. Google Analytics and SERPstat is the yeah. The okay. What's the, what would you say was the second one? SERPstat. Okay, SERPstat. They're not cutting the check, so that's cool. Let's move yeah. on. There all you right, go. go <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, yeah, the meeting, the next meeting, I call it just an intro meeting, right? Okay. Everyone has that intro meeting of some kind. Right. But I focus on three things. Okay. Tell me about yourself. Always lead off with them, right? Right. The client starts with, I'm here for a reason. Let me tell you what that reason is. Okay. So I give them 30 minutes usually okay. is what it is where they right. just go over everything. Okay. Then the next step is where I just talk about the financial planning side, okay. the way that I approach it. And I, I do it very differently. I use a mind mapping method on a big whiteboard. Okay. And it's a well, big- So you, you do mind mapping with the client, like right there? Why, if they it? sign up. If they do, okay. I'll, okay. I'll walk them through. I'll say, hey, here's what it will look like if you sign up. So let me okay. just walk you through the process. Wow. Here's what a completed financial plan will look like. Wow. And I'll walk them through that saying, here's how I figure out which scenario is best for the client. Wow everything okay and then I go into the investment philosophy and that's where I I don't just say I know the financial markets and I know finance you demonstrate I it. demonstrate it right so I talk about why I invest clients money the way that I do which is unique okay right like if you don't have that investment background right. you need to outsource that yeah because chances are you don't know what you're doing with your right. clients money right 
right. I, I feel like I do. Right. So I demonstrate this is why I do what I do. Okay. And so I'm signaling that I know what I'm doing, but clients are also realizing that I get to hire this man and he's going to be a real money manager, personal money manager for me. Right. He's not relying on somebody else or some other right, expert. Right, he right. is my guy. Right. So it's that boutique okay. feel that I'm going for. Got it. Right. Got it. So let, let's so that that's amazing, right? And listen, I don't have to tell some of y'all <laughs> if you're an advisor, step your game up because you're gonna be losing your clients to Ryan. <laughs> um, so let, let's talk let's talk about the uh, the, the planning process now. So yeah. what does the financial planning process look like? It's a three to four hour long meeting. Wow. So I tell clients it's a big ask. Like I tell them straight up, like I'm asking a lot of you, but it's for your own good. Three to four hours. Three to four hours. And I tell them it's not like going to the dentist. I'm not going to be pulling your teeth from you. Right. Like the the traditional pen and paper method where the advisor, which I used to do. Right. Just sit there and ask question after question after question, just trying to pull right. information so, from that so, client. Yeah, so not to interrupt you, but this is because what, the best financial planning I've ever seen done was by a team that I was a part of at Merrill, and they led with planning. So they did all of the planning oh. up, up front before okay. they, they, they were an actual client. So you, these are people that are clients first, I, then you do that. I tell that. them we are going to do the account opening process okay. and the financial planning process concurrently. Okay. At the same okay. time. Okay. Yeah, because I'm it. not going to put you got them, in... Yeah. You yeah, know, 30, 40 hours worth of work right. for you to walk away and not give me anything. Okay, yeah, okay, so it makes sense. I'm a business here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, right, right, okay, that makes sense. Okay, so so back to the process. So, so, three to four hours. Three to four hours. So instead of asking question after question after question, I use, you saw my whiteboard in the office. Yeah. It's a big whiteboard. Right. And so I'm standing up the whole time. I'm not sitting behind my desk. I'm standing up mm. and I'm talking about four key things. What are your goals? Mm. Life goals. Life what goal. are you trying to achieve, right? Okay. I want to retire. Where do you want to retire? You know, right. It's like, why do you want to travel? You know, right. what about leaving, you know, inheritance to your kids? Like all that stuff. Right. Then I talk about different scenarios. By the time we're done with goals, I'm going to come up with what I think is the client's base case scenario. Okay. I'll have a pretty good idea of what that is. Okay. But then I'll talk about what ifs. Wow. So the scenario. So I'm really big on the scenario based planning. Okay. So we'll talk about that, talk about their assets, estate planning, insurance, tax, all that type of stuff. Okay. And so that takes about three to four hours. That's, wow. I'm not. And any pushback? Do you feel like, nah, no, I do, it. do you feed them? Because whenever we're done <laughs> right. on the mind map, so mind map is a way to connect very complex ideas and thoughts together. Together, yeah. That's what a mind map is. Right. So whenever you're done, the client's looking at their financial life in front of them. Wow. And you're able yeah. to wrap your it's hard head to walk away from what that. is going on. Wow. And so it's it's a powerful process. Wow. wow. I love it. Wow. And that was that something you learned in graduate school or you, no. or you just created on your own? No, I, I read a book and I, I don't remember the book. And That's I, all right, they're not I, cutting the check either. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so they had they had an iteration of this. I just changed it to what works for me. Right. What I think is best wow. for the clients. Wow. And I've been doing it for three or four years now and it's it's great wow and so it's it's still i'm still fine-tuning it and okay. changing it and that, that's the benefit of being a, an entrepreneur a small yeah. business owner right yeah. i mean you have the freedom to change these things so whenever i'm done it takes about honestly it takes about a month to put a plan together wow a month to put a plan together i i have three 1099 pair of planners that help me do a lot of the grunt work wow okay. i'm always the lead advisor of course yeah. but it just requires a lot of man hours to put together all these different models and all these different scenarios. And so whenever I'm done, right. they get an electric co electronic copy, but I print and bind yeah, yeah, this yeah. big ass book that I right. give to the client. Right. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. No, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> we, we, uh... But, but it, it's great because we can now compare and contrast all these different scenarios. What if you retire today versus three years from now versus five years from right. now? What if you turn off Social Security at 70 versus full retirement age or wow. downsize your house versus keeping it, renting it out? I mean, right. all these different scenarios, right. you can't silo them because one decision affects the other. Right. This wow. is the right, in my opinion, this is the right way to approach planning. Wow. That, and, and again, now that's what that, that team at Merrill does as well. They, they create this binder that they give to the client. Yeah. Um, and I always would pitch it and talk about it as a living, breathing document, right? Like it's real. You can go in there, highlight things, make changes, keep track of goals, things like yeah. that. So let's talk about that. Obviously, yeah. there's no straight line in life. Things will change. 
Is it, is it, so when you, so how many reviews do you do? Do you stick to the standard two a year or, or do you I leave it up to the client? I reach out to clients three times a year three to times. do a review. Okay. But I'll be honest, most don't take me up on that. Right. So if they don't do at least once a year, I'm calling you personally. Wow. Like you need to get into my office and okay. we need to review this thing. Right. Wow. And so by that time, so whenever I present, we'll agree on a scenario and a okay. course of action. Okay. Very rarely we'll have to go back and change some more like options in the plan. Wow. But we agree to it. And then my job is to hold them accountable. So during the meetings, I'll say, hey, you said you're going to be saving an extra $1,500 per month. How is that going? Wow. It's like, oh, it's like, hey, what about that estate attorney you're supposed to reach out to? You right. called them? Right. No, I haven't. You need to go do that. Right. 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 <laughs> That's why right. they're paying me. Like, yeah, I, yeah, need yeah. To, I need to hold them accountable. Right. You know? Right. And yeah. again, this is not, this podcast is not about, about fees or anything like that. But I will say this, the war on fees is on, but I yeah. feel like an advisor that goes that in depth shouldn't have a problem charging 1%. Just shouldn't, right? And 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 I don't want to get into that. And, and people can again, you, you can search and Google and broker check and do all of that stuff. We're not going to do that here. Yeah. But I just feel like vi n there's very few advisors going to that length with their planning. Yeah. And I think so long as you do that, you'll always be able to defend hell, whatever you want to charge. But yeah. as long as people are willing to pay it, right? And and that's what my mentor always says. Like you need to find a hundred people who like you, yeah. and and and, yeah. and 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 do what you do. You know, like what you do and how you do it. That's it. Yeah. And then from there, you can scale down how many of that hundred you want to work with. But you can't do anything without getting to that number and then figure that out. But and then you can structure the business however you want. That's right. awesome. Yes. So let's get to, you know, a company that is cutting a check. Um, you are you are an, an Altruist beta user, yes. right? Yep. So, let, so let's talk about that, how that, it, you know, comes into what you're doing, the, your interest there. Um, and, yes. and, you know, why you felt like it was a good fit for what you do. And it seems like, right, with, with those that know about it and, and a lot of advisors are excited, but someone that has hands-on with it right now, talk a little bit about that. And you said you even had an example as well, which is cool. Yeah. So let's hear about so, that. So, yeah, I'm a beta user. Okay. Um, it's, so far, it's, it's been great. Right. I mean, they're still building it out. Right. Um, so I use TD for a custodian. Okay. And I use Orion for the performance reporting, aggregator, client, interface all that stuff okay and um it's expensive like right. i'm not gonna lie it's it's pretty expensive and it's not very easy to use okay so pretty excited about altruist i so whenever i have that initial meeting with the client i will show them what their experience is going to be like so right. talk about the communication and i the monthly statements that i send out and i show them the reports and the fees so I'm like I'm trying to be very transparent about it and so I walk them through that well this last prospect that I had who came in I showed them what altruist looks like. I say look I'm a beta user for this exciting new product called altruist if things turn out well then I can replace Orion with altruist so this is what your you know this is what it look like if you ever if you ever log on and right. they said wow this is super clean very simple to understand. Yeah. A lot better than what you're currently using. So. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Lock on wood. You know, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It all works out. Yeah. You know, so so yeah. let, let's pair two things here. So in a walk and talk, we talked about that you could possibly think about raising, right, your 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 minimums. And and the reason why I bring that up is because I think one of the things that Jason is passionate about is that advisors' practices when they put together is is expensive, and, and most times they're inefficient. But by using altruist, it'll save advisors time and money to then maybe give you say maybe you want to take a flyer on someone that doesn't they can't meet you know your minimum but they could use your your planning process yes. right do you feel like it, it, it may your, give you a little bit of capacity client, to do that right it's yeah. your cost per client and right. whatever that is and obviously the cheaper the technology is that's right. the, the lower the cost is so yeah. you can afford but I also have my own cost as well. Right. Yeah. What is yeah, my yeah. time worth? Right. Right. Exactly. So, exactly. yeah. I mean, theoretically, all else being equal, if you know, if I were able to use Altruist versus Orion, then right. Yeah, I should be able to service the you know clients with the lower asset. Right. But just depends upon where you want to go with your firm, what type of clientele, who you enjoy working with. Right. Um, right. I don't enjoy working with younger 
individuals. Um, really? That's, that's just, I mean, younger, I mean like 22, okay. just starting out. Right. Okay. That's not my thing. Right. You know? They're just, but I enjoy, I really enjoy working with those in their prime earning years of their life. Right. Who okay. have these big college questions, retirement type questions. Right. These big, big decisions that can make or break their their financial life and their goals right and and yeah. uh, uh, just to just to tie up that point i think you know the whole thing is well you can service someone with a hundred thousand just as well as you can service someone with a million i think it, when you get into it it does get more complex when yes. you get into the weeds with folks who make the more money and have more money yeah. On the flip side, which I try and get people to understand, it's not as simple as walking into an inner city community as well and telling people that they need to save and have goals and do all this other stuff. That is challenging as well on both sides, yep. right? And then you have the middle, which is the majority of people in this country, 50 million people who are working poor, working, making money, yep. but just haven't figured it out. They yep. need access to advice. but. I love that we hit on so many things that you do that yeah. our business now is trying to shy away from and people are uncomfortable. Yeah. I, don't, I can't have a, you know, I can't have a minimum and, you know, and, and you know, I, I not having a big social media, Twitter presence and all of that thing, like you're embracing who you are and how you do it. Yeah. And it's stout, like it, it's, it's, it's so in tune, it's efficient, as you, as you said, right? And, and that's a theme, I think, that you, that weaves throughout your practice and, and, and how you run it. Any other things where you feel like your your practice stands out in terms of how you use tech or tools that you use where you feel like it allows you to give better advice that you? So it, it's a unique thing, right? So we're trying to drive efficiency in this business, right? Yeah. There, there, there's a production line-esque to this business. Right. It's definitely there on the investment side. You okay. can scale up the investment models and the way you manage money, and like that's very easy to scale up. But the planning side, you, you, yeah. you can't planning, because yeah. It, yeah. it's more of a job shop type product. Like right. each individual's unique, each person's goals are unique. So it just, you just require that, the man hours to go in yes. there to yep. help provide that advice. So yep. technology can help make some of that better, whether it's different social security timing tools or you know debt calculators. Um, honestly, a lot of the financial planning products that I use, I'm an e-money user, you are? Okay. but I don't lean on it. Right. We actually built out this giant Excel workbook that we do all of our projections and modeling and planning on. Wow. It's a lot more efficient. Just yeah. to wait, because yeah. we like certain things, the way that they're built out and the input. So right. Listen, Excel, we just built it. it yeah, Excel you know? is it. Excel yeah. is it, yeah. Right. So, so Excel right. Right, it is a big driver of efficiency and, for right. us. And, yeah. and, and before, <laughs> again, before, before we transition, I think, you know, just from talking to you and having this conversation, I th and I hope younger advisors and just advisors in general, right? You can, I, I believe you can't teach an old dog new tricks if you, you know, if you fortunate enough but um is you you mentioned a lot of i built it right i you're, you're very hands-on right you built your website right you you yeah. had experience with certain things and and again back to the whole startup thing what do what do startup founders do answers what if we could stand here and push a button on our phone and get a car right like you you see an issue and then you you don't just say out oh, you go and address it so you did that you right. know the same thing with the excel um and again the signals of where where you you place your business and all these other things so yeah. i think it's really important that people understand right and let's go all the way back to the beginning of the conversation that you said about your grandfather right is these hands-on right and may not, it doesn't always have to be right my father hates the fact that i don't like to work on cars like him like daddy i like my hands like this right but <laughs> he likes to tinker with things but again hands-on doesn't necessarily mean that i'm lugging stuff and i'm building and his bricks and right but it could be this now right code building a website all those things another so, saying of my grandfather you can't be a little you can't be scared of a little bit of hard work right you yeah. just can't right you got to be willing to get your hands in there and make it happen right yeah all right y'all take a breath the jewels are they're falling out the sky i got some in my shoes i need to pluck out um but so listen i, I think to me that's fascinating and, and what i love about getting in depth with you is 
in, in our business, which is so cool, obviously outside of the physical the, of us not being alike, our practices couldn't be any more different, right? right. And we, we serve people who are diametrically opposed and, and how we go about it is so different too. But I, I also want to lean on this fact and, and talk about this. You said something that was really important. And I want to talk to the advisory community about this too, which is what we need to understand again fees are going to zero right the big tech behemoths are just waiting to pounce on this industry vanguard is content with making sure that fees go to zero they're after planning now right. client experience is important all those other things here's what's not going to ever go away the human touch yeah very in-depth planning like you said and i want to lean on that point for this you mentioned man hours and man and like and, and being able to take all of that data and do something with it yeah. That's what's, what needs to happen here, right? You said you have those that you contract out to be able to do that. So I think for those in our business that are, you know, like me and, and want to run around and, and, you know, be the, be the face of a firm, ta-da, right? But yeah. in, in the background, at the end of the day, we can't hide from the fact people need planning. I don't care where you are, they need planning. And if it's gonna be done well, I think it's incumbent upon us as an industry to embrace that, whatever you wanna say planning looks like. And as tech starts to pull our business apart, that we still stay true to making sure that every single client we work with has something that, again, we walk in the middle of the street and bump our heads, something happens to us. They can always go to that document or they can yeah. pull up a, an Excel spreadsheet or a Google, a, a Google Doc that you've been working on together and be able to manage their financial lives, right? And I always tell clients this, and, and, I, and I want you to answer this question before, before we, you know, we, we start to tie things up is, I always tell my clients, right, there, there's come a point where I'm going to know I reached you, right, where yeah. I feel like that now we have a successful relationship. So when clients come and I ask them certain questions and they say, oh, I did it, right, or I took that step or already, now I know, all right, I'm having an effect, yeah. right, yeah. or when they are proactive, right, in, in, in reaching out and saying, oh, I went ahead and took the next step with that or whatever. So before before we get into, you know, what I, what I love is the, is the best part of the podcast, talk a little bit about, you know, when you're when you're working with a client and how, how do you know you reach them right is there is is it like a is it a conversation yeah is it something where you feel like they've they've embraced the process away from you like what does that look like where you feel like ah really i finally got to this client i think it's a little bit different with with each client and their own personality okay um but a lot of times it's whenever they're excited to finally move forward because there, there's a lot of stress like they're coming to see an advisor for a reason. They have a big question. They need that help. They're getting overwhelmed. They're scared of the markets. They're scared of retiring, whatever the case might be. And so if you can prove to them with hard numbers and data that this is the best path for you to go through, right. and here are the reasons why, yeah. you see relief leave and they're like more excited to pursue it. So wow, I really can retire in three years. Like that's, that's huge or I can pay for my kids to go to school. Like, right. wow, like what a great thing that I can do for my kids. Right. I think that's when you reach them, right? Like they, they, they feel confident in actually moving forward with, with, their, with their goals. Right, so, all right, here we go. And before, and before we transition, I wanna let, every, let everybody know I'm surrounded by Californians right now that are freezing. I know it, I can feel it. <laughs> They are freezing and it is beautiful out here. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, see, I, I, ca I caught you doing this. <laughs> it's gorgeous out here, y'all relax. If I see somebody with a hoodie, like I'm a T5 out here. Um, so the, the, the genesis of this question, right, is, is me having conversations with people to get their answers to this question to help me heal, right? And, and I'm in a process now where I, this is none of this was planned. I had none of this planned for my life, and it's difficult when you're piecing your life back together to see a version of yourself that you didn't have planned, right? right. And I'm not. I know I'm not in a place to be able to give the answer that I should be able to give, right? And and. I want to grow to get to that point. So hearing answers from people about this is one cathartic for me, and it's a salve on the wound that is continuing to heal through these conversations. Um, so I'm grateful that people take the opportunity to sit with me. So I appreciate that. Um, but tell me a little bit about an, an experience right, that, you're, that you're most grateful for that just didn't work out for you, that you wanted so badly or something that you wanted to come together that just didn't. Um... 
there's just there's a that's a hard question <laughs> that's a really hard question i mean you could go a number of different ways whether it's your childhood yeah or relationships yeah. or um what comes to mind right away what do you think about when you ask that it's a professional one i will say okay um it's it's honestly my time at merrill really I mean, yeah so it was my first job right out of undergrad um, and it was, I got, the, I started out with an internship. So I did an internship my final year at USC and it was in their Beverly Hills office, which is like one of their flagship offices. There's a lot of money in right. Beverly Hills. Yeah, just a little. And so <laughs> I, um, I joined this team and it was a three man team that managed a billion dollars between the three of them. Wow. And so, um, the idea is I was their junior partner oh, on their yeah. team. The good old junior which, which, partner. Which meant that I was their cold call. Yeah, of right? course. Yeah. yeah. So I picked up the phone, dialed 300 dials a day, trying to drum up business. And it was a 401k plan team. Mm -hmm. So calling businesses, trying to bring up, you know, mm -hmm. 401k assets. And um, I don't know how good you were at cold calling. I loved cold calling. I loved it. I didn't I love it. it actually. I, I didn't <laughs> love it. No, I did not love it. I, I was okay at it, though. Right, you know, right. and, and it's, it's good. Like, talk about a great skill, like of how course. to deal with rejection and yeah. how to talk to people in the sales process. Like, yeah. like, we can be, you know, philanthropic all we can in this industry, but you still have to be able to sell. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's required. So I was on this team and I was doing good. And, you know, as a Merrill Junior guy, you have certain requirements that you have to hit. Well, yeah. you're on a team like this. You're hitting all your marks. Yeah. You're fine. Like, I, I had the golden ticket yep. career-wise. Yep. Then 2008 happened. Oh. 2008 happened. B of A, of course, bought Merrill for pennies on the dollar. The team that I was on didn't work out so well. And me being the, the low guy on the totem pole, you know, I... I, go. Nobody really cared what happened to me. And, and mind you, all of this was happening when my firstborn son was born. Oh, so wow. he was born in October 2008. Jeez. And so, you know, my childhood was just flashbacks of what's going on with my childhood and being the father that I wanted to be for my son. And I lived in, I don't know if you know L.A. too, Eric, but I lived in Valencia. Okay. But I commuted down to Beverly Hills, which is on the west side. Right. That's an hour and a half, two hour drive each way. Oh. And so that, as a junior broker, trying to you know, build a career mm -hmm. and just the commute and not being there for my son, it was just, it was just overwhelming. Right. And so um, I left, I joined a local Morgan Stanley branch in, in Valencia. So I went from an hour and a half to our commute down to a five minute commute. And um, had to really build my own book of business with no safety net. Right. And so I was pretty bummed about it whenever it happened. Right. But um, it was honestly the best thing that could happen to me. Like, how do you build a book of business on your own? You, you learn the industry by doing it the hard way. Yeah. There is no safety net. No one's giving you assets and you can hit your marks. You got to do it yourself. Right. And so that decision led me onto this path to realizing that I, there was, I, I, so I told you my quarter life crisis, right? My quarter yeah. life crisis was there was nothing special about me as a broker. Right. Yeah, I'm not well connected. Right. I'm not a great salesman. Right. I don't, I'm not a specialist in anything. Right. How do I remedy that? Well, you go back to school. And for me, it was become a specialist in something. So that's what made me go back to school and study finance and eventually start my firm. So wow. all in all, I mean, I, it was the right move. It just, took a long time to finally get to this point right right yeah and and I've, I've what I'm learning through these conversations is just personally is when you're out when you're at that lowest moment right again right your, your child being born or some of the things that, that have happened to me is at that lowest moment you're also given the seed of opportunity yeah right but it, it's how you move forward at it and you and a lot of times the water is your tears is how you water that seed and, and things will come out of that. And, you know, as, as you know, I've, I've, you know, I've mentioned in, a, in, in one of these I, I did with Jason is that I'm tired of crying about trying to find the answer, but I realize every time I do, I'm watering the next opportunity because the seed right. of what's gonna happen out of all of the trials and the pain and the tribulation and all of what I felt I yeah. should have been, right? Yeah. Or the things that was gonna make me special 
the 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 the, the pain and, and the and the tears of watering watering that seed has birthed me sitting here with you. So I'm appreciate you, you know, for for, yeah. for the time. And uh, so we're gonna go and get everybody here some hot cocoa. Uh, so they don't, so they don't freeze. Again, thanks everyone. You know, for for tuning in, um, we are very appreciative of every single share, every single like, every single comment. Um, there's a lot of people who work hard to put this together for you. Um, not only the advisory community, but the community and all of us in general. Again, thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for the time, um, and we look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. I appreciate you. <laughs>